The 2020 NFL Scouting Combine is the next step in the offseason. General Manager John Robinson, how many different things are you and the personnel staff and the coaching staff taking part uh, part in here in Indianapolis? Yeah, I mean, we've got a pretty extensive staff here. You know, starts with the medical, you know, like every year, you know, unlike last year, it's good to be back in Indy first and foremost. So, you know, we get some face time with these prospects. Uh, our doctors and, and trainers can visit with them and get the medical background. Um, you know, we've started the interview process. Uh, where we get to physically sit down and, and talk to them, not via computer, Zoom link, or whatever kind of webcast you're going to do it on, which is always good. And then the workout portion, you know, here at the, here at the end of the week is we'll get to see these guys move around a little bit. How good does it feel to be able to have those in-person, kind of old-fashioned, one-on-one conversations as opposed to having to navigate some of the software and the technology that you've had to in the last couple of years? Yeah, back to normalcy. You can read body language. You can... You know, try to pick up on mannerisms. Uh, you can, you know, try to press this button on a certain player to see how he's going to react. You know, ask him some of the tough questions that, you know, why did you not finish on this player or why did you go the wrong way here? As opposed to having to do that through a Zoom, iPad, whatever. It's just hard. So it's good to be back to the way that we're typically used to doing it. What are the strengths of the 2022 NFL draft class? I think there's a lot of good players. You know, we saw a lot down in Mobile. We saw some out at the East-West Shrine game. Then you've got the you got the underclassmen added to the combine. There's a lot of different players at position groups. You know, I think that the receiver group, there's some players. I think the tight end group, there's some players. I think the O-line group, there's some players. You know, it looks like the linebacker group, specifically the edge position. Uh, there's a lot of players that can play on the end of the line of scrimmage. So, you know, we'll continue to, to mine through and dig and try to find players that can help our football team you know, in all rounds of the draft and even the post-draft process. Before you get to the draft, though, there's a lot to journey through. Free agency starts. Um, when can fans start to really see some of that stuff start to pick up and see some movement out of the Tennessee Titans? Yeah, I mean, we'll start, you know, free agency will be here in, in a couple of weeks. You know, we're having some some talks now with our current players. They'll start that window when we can talk to you know representatives for, for other players on other teams. Uh, we'll see kind of how the market unfolds, you know, on a lot of those players. And, you know, that will really dictate how quickly we jump out of the gate or we just kind of sit back and, and wait and let the mar- market kind of come to us. John, do you remain optimistic about Harold Landry staying with the Titans? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. You know, we've had some productive conversations. Uh, Harold knows how, how we feel about him. But it's a big puzzle that we have to put together. There's There's a lot of pieces. And you have to be creative to make sure that, you're allocating your resources correctly, and you know, Harold's an important resource for us, and we want to try to keep him. He, he's tough, he's smart, he works hard, he's been a productive player for us. So uh, we'll continue those conversations, and hopefully we can get to a, to a resolution. How do you balance wanting to preserve what has been a successful roster and keep those main pieces, but also acknowledge that maybe there can be a benefit to infusing some outside blood into a locker room? Yeah, those are always hard decisions. You know, the decision that we made on Jarrell Casey. I love Jarrell. That was a hard decision that we had to make, but one that we felt was best for the team at the end of the day. There's, you know, those are the decisions that we face now as an organization after, you know, having six straight winning seasons. We've got a lot of, you know, we've got good football players and, um, there's there's other teams that want to get those players and, and try to get them on their team and you know you've got to be mindful of, of turning the roster and and continuing to try to infuse younger players with your salary cap situation being tighter and I don't know what the exact number is but obviously you don't have 50 million dollars in cap room like some teams do are we going to see the priority just be on the current Titans more so than going out and going crazy on March the 16th when free agency opens? Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'd say that's probably a fair assessment, though, Mike, is to try to you know think about you know this year's free agents, but also some guys that we've got coming up in future years. You know, you're going to try to keep you know those guys around too, and those are some of the decisions that we're working through now, and the decisions that we'll have to make uh, as we inch closer to the start of free agency. The Titans pick at number 26 and then not again until number 90. How does that play into the equation and all of the puzzle pieces that you're moving around knowing that there could potentially be some wiggle room in there somewhere? Yeah, it's a long time to wait. And, you know, whether you you know move up in the draft or you move back in the draft, first thing you have to do, you have to have a willing trade partner, somebody that's, 
you know, it really wants to come to that pick um, or go back to that pick, according to which direction you're going. Yeah, but certainly the, the draft picks weigh into, and you know, we'll get closer to that in, in April after the pro days and the final meetings about where we see those players maybe falling. You know, is he going to make it past this team at 20 or 21? Do we need to go get him? Or you know, I think we could slide back three picks and get the same player. We have not spoken with you since Amy Adams Strunk gave you and head coach Mike Vrabel contract extensions. Uh, if you would just acknowledge, you know, how that makes you feel personally and also what you think it says for the organization's position right now. Yeah, extremely blessed that uh, we have her family and, and trust and, and the confidence in the direction of, of the football team. I know our entire staff works extremely hard to put a product on the field in the community that they can be proud of. And, um, you know, just extremely blessed to, to work for her and, and for the way that she is, allows Mike and I to do our job. So can't thank her enough. And that consistency must be incredibly helpful, not only for the football aspect of it, but for the organization as a whole. Well, I think, you know, that's what we, you know, we talk about building a foundation. And, you know, I feel like we've got a good foundation, certainly on our football team players-wise, but also organizationally staff-wise, you know, that we can continue to build on and, and improve. And, you know, we do a lot of things well, and we want to try to do them even better. And there's some things that, you know, I personally got to do better and that we've got to do better. And um, we're going to try to improve on those things. It's funny, as Amy and I have been here during the last seven years that you've been the general manager, um, we see a different feel towards the Titans. There's certainly respect for what is being done. There's certainly an admiration for being done. It's a, it's a different sentiment that, that we get from other ball clubs. Do you sense the same things from agents, from college players, from other teams that you speak with? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, you know, in, in the pro football world, everybody understands that it's hard to win in this league. It's hard to win a ball game in this league. When you look back at games, you know, I was watching some before we came to the Combine. There's a lot of teams that, that didn't have great records that were playing teams with really good records that going into the fourth quarter, it was a close ball game. And the team with a good record ended up winning somehow. And, and that's pro football and you know we've been able to find ways to win and and be a competitive football team and be a consistent football team for the last six years since we've been here and I think that you know teams do recognize that because we in this NFL football environment we understand how hard it is to win in the National Football League. John Robinson with us at TennesseeTitans.com.